Hi there, my name is Nils with Learn to DIY and in today's video I'm going to be showing you a time lapse of how I completed this bathroom build from start to finish. Alright, so a few quick things about this build. Number one, in most of my tutorials they're actually DIY step-by-step -step tutorials showing you how to accomplish something. This is a little bit different. This is actually a video that's just showing a time lapse of the process that I took to complete building this bathroom. So if you're looking for a exactly how to do step-by-step -step each part of it and in detail and walk you through it, this is not that video. This is a time lapse showing you the steps that are involved and I'll narrate through so you can see what's involved if you're looking to bite off a project like this. It's really not too bad, especially when you consider it one step at a time. If you look at it as a whole, it can be overwhelming, but really it's not too bad if you're doing it just a little at a time. Another thing to consider here is I actually had finished my whole basement except for the bathroom. We ran out of money. It cost quite a bit to finish a, a large space like this. So what I had done was all of the things that were done around the basement that I had to do while finishing. So I ran plumbing lines in here, hot and cold, for my sink and the toilet and the shower. And then I'd also run electrical in here for the lights and then the fan and the light above. So those things were already ready. It was framed and insulated. And again, I have videos on framing and electrical and lots of different things on my channel if you want to learn more about the specific processes for doing those. So I hope you enjoy watching and learning what it takes to complete a basement bathroom or any bathroom really from start to finish. So my first step at this point was to cut a hole in the cement foundation so that I could put a drain for the bathtub. This is quite a bit of work, so I used a jackhammer, a sledgehammer, and a skill saw with a diamond blade on it, which allowed me to cut through the concrete, make the scoring that I needed to so that I could knock the concrete out. So there was a lot of trial and error here. Basically, what I'm doing is trying to get the existing plumbing hooked up to a bathtub drain. There's two parts that need to be drained, both the bottom and then the overflow valve in the bathtub. So I'm basically just working with these two inch ABS pipes here, I'm putting some glue and then testing and moving and getting everything set up. So once the drains were connected, I was able to put that back wall in, which is pretty simple. This is just a four part piece. There's the three parts of the surround and then the bathtub itself. And then right here, I'm working on the manifold. I'm basically getting plumbing hooked up. I've got some backboard, back support braces behind where the shower head is gonna go and the spigot for the tub. And then I hooked up the water and I'm using PEX pipe to do all this. PEX is pretty simple to work with. Then I had to drill the holes for where the manifold is going to come out as well as the bathtub spigot. So this part on the right here, I'm actually framing the area behind where the bathtub is going to be. The bathtub is actually shorter than the bathroom itself, so I needed to give that plenty of support. And I decided the easiest way to do that was just to put a wall in there. So I framed that wall in and then finished up the work on the manifold so that we had water that was able to come out. And so the shower head's hooked up and the shower's basically ready to go at this point. So next up was drywall. And you have to make sure you're using mildew or mold resistant drywall in all of this. And because the framing was already done here, this started to go pretty quick. I did have a couple of issues as far as fitting everything, but uh, I've got some videos that I'll link to in the description for my drywall process that I showed when I finished my basement. But getting the drywall in is pretty satisfying. This is the part where you actually get to see what the walls are going to look like and how everything goes. So I left the ceiling open because my next step was to install the ventilation. So I actually had to cut a hole through the wall to the outside of the house and luckily that back wall there is actually the outside, um, actually the top of it just above it in the ceiling goes to the outside. And once I got that hole drilled, I was able to install the ventilation fan, which also has a light in it that you can see shining there. And it took a little finagling and work to get that done, but I finally got that in. I had to redo some of the drywall and get that to fit just right so that it matched up really nicely with the soffit up on the left. Now putting the ceiling drywall in can be a real pain. I actually do have a drywall lift, but I thought, you know, this won't be too bad. But it was still quite a pain to do, um, especially since I was trying to do this by myself mostly. So I got that in there and everything went pretty well. And then at that point it was time to start masking and taping. So my wife helped me put all the mesh tape up for the joints. And then at that point I started mudding over all of the drywall screws and then getting all the corners done. Now we did have a plan in place where we were going to do shiplap and since we knew that I was not going to take a lot of time doing the mudding and taping of the butt joints on the vertical sections of the wall. I just did the ceiling, got that all done and then I started in on the flooring at that point. So we used a laminate that is rated for bathrooms and kitchens. It's a waterproof and watertight uh, seal that gets created when you finish this off and I thought it was pretty simple, looked pretty nice, just picked up a couple of boxes at Costco 
and then put in the uh, trim work, the baseboard after that. We have a craftsman style home, so we just used some pretty simple five and a half inch molding on the base. So next up, I taped off the floor and got it ready so that I could mud, tape, and paint without messing up the floor. And then I sprayed these lines that will go in the gaps behind where the shiplap is gonna be. Now one little tool that made the shiplap so much easier is I actually used a little laser measure, and I'll put a link to the one I used in the description below. It's from Calculated Industries. Basically, I could just hold that up to one wall and then laser shine it over to the other wall and get my exact dimensions within an eighth of an inch. And that made all the measurements for this so much easier. I just used my phone to write down the measurements, went out to the shop and made my cuts. So I'm just using eighth inch plywood here that I cut into uh, eight inch strips. And I've actually got a whole nother video showing how to do shiplap, so feel free to check that out as well. Caulking is really important in this. Um, anything that you don't caulk is gonna show through pretty easily. So we made sure to get the tub really well, get around the surround, and then get all of the baseboards and everything. So everything was really tight. Once that was done, we were ready to start painting so I started in by hand cutting in with the trim and <laughs> I've got a video on that actually if you want to see it too I had a professional painter show us how to do that so got that going and then started rolling it got the ceiling done and everything and it was starting to look pretty well finished at this point as far as the final look of the place which is pretty cool next up we had to assemble and install the vanity and the sink and that vanity actually was the fourth or fifth one that we bought we had a hard time finding one that would fit well in there be big enough to uh, give us a lot of space, but not so big that it would intrude on the area of the toilet. You do have to have enough space around the toilet by code so that there's plenty of room on both sides. So we found one that fits pretty well, and assembling it was honestly quite a pain, and I was doing this fairly late. Uh, but we got this all done, had my daughters helping me out a little bit, and finally got the drawers in, and everything was looking pretty good. And then finally, um, after that, we put on the top, the sink top, which is all one solid piece. It's pretty shallow but that kind of takes best advantage of the storage space underneath. So the little drain that comes with this is actually this really shallow piece that goes straight back and gives you maximum space inside the drawers underneath, so it worked out pretty well. Next step was to install the finished plumbing for the sink. So we put in the faucet and then hooked up the hot and cold. Actually had some serious issues getting uh, these to, to fit on properly without any leaks. So I ended up using shark bite, which I should have done in the first place, which made the whole job a lot easier. Just had to do that uh, by my 6 a.m. Home Depot run. So got that working after a lot of finagling and trying to figure things out with the PEX pipe. So as you can see, there was a lot of back and forth to try to get that to work. So I did eventually get that fixed and running. We didn't have water overnight one of the nights because I had to leave the main shut off. But, you know, live and learn. So next I went and did the light fixtures, got those put in place, and I actually had a lot of hard time with this because I had purchased these many months before and lost a couple of the little bolts, so that's why it's a little crooked there. Still got to get that fixed. But then it was on to the fun stuff. Then you put on the towel racks and the toilet paper holders and different things like that that are just a nice finish, uh, finish pieces that help tie the whole thing in really nicely. Um, did a lot of caulking around the sink, and again I have a video on uh, how to caulk like a pro, so feel free to check that out and then started up on getting the toilet in place. So I had to put the flange in place as well as the wax ring and make sure that those were as flush as can be so that the toilet would sit nice and flush on the ground and not rock from side to side. Did have to do a little leveling or adjusting, which is pretty common when you're installing a toilet. Bolted it down really nicely and then got the water hooked up to the tank and everything was looking pretty good there. Next up is putting up the curtains and the curtain rods, getting those bolted into place, and then getting the finished curtains in there, the mirrors, um, everything like that. And eventually, I came out with this. So the bathroom, I think, came out pretty nicely. Um, this whole process took about three weeks, and it was just nights and weekends, and then uh, a couple of days, a couple of Saturdays that were pretty long days to try to get everything done. So this is what happens when you try to do everything yourself, and I think it was totally well worth it. My brother and his wife and kids were coming to town, so we wanted to make sure that they had a bathroom available to them for when they were here. So we kind of actually finished this about 10 minutes before they walked in the door. So timing worked out pretty nice, and I uh, got everything done. It was fully functional, and now we have bathroom downstairs that looks good and works really well and we're happy with how it turned out. So that's it. That's the whole process for finishing a bathroom. Hope you learned a few things. If you've got questions or comments, feel free to leave those in the comments section below and I'll be happy to help out in any way I can.